just asking you because Western Union's presence is all over the region. You go anywhere, and I was actually just talking to people in the company. You see it everywhere. So, is there a strategy of monopolizing essentially, where the low-priced uh, uh, competitors don't really get a chance? No, it's not. I mean, it's hard work. I mean, you know, I started the company about 20 years ago, my 19 years ago, and we had only 40,000 locations. And I was responsible for international expansion, and it was hard work. Early morning, stay, you know, jumping on a plane, going to Tajikistan, going to Philippines, going to Vietnam, going op uh, or going to Latin America, opening country by country, really launching it. It's that. I mean, the market is open to everyone, but I think that Western Union has been doing that in early stages very good with good brand investment and customer loyalty. By the way, our customers are loyal. When they send money, they know they trust us. So they and they know that the money will arrive at the uh, you know, the, the father and father can take the money and go to a, uh, go to a pharmacy and pick up the medicine. Right. That's big. That's that trust big, and we never try to uh, you know break that trust. We always try to satisfy that and understand the need. CEO of Western Union, Hikmet Ersik, was in Dubai to launch its digital operations in the region. The Middle East is a vital economic hub, bringing people together from across Europe, Africa and Asia, and hence a huge target market for Western Union. The UAE accounts for a sizable volume of the total amount of remittances, which makes the country the third largest person-to-person -person remittance market in the world, according to the World Bank. Well, the global remittance market is huge. There is about $600 billion sent C2C, person-to-person -person worldwide every year and it's growing like you know four or five percent we are going with the market it's a growing market it's an exciting market and people are continuing to support their loved ones and there are about 250 million migrants worldwide and if you put them together actually that will be the fourth or fifth biggest nation right and you know they generate like 600 billion dollar um, remittances every year and there's no bigger direct investment than remittances globally it's a huge economical impact. But globally, we've seen that the remittance market has surged, but regionally, you've seen that there has been a fall, especially in the last year compared to the previous years. Why do you think that is? I think it's a circle of the economical development. You know, globally, it's been growing. It has been a slower growth in the, in the Gulf states. Uh, the reason is definitely economical investment, you know, attracting new, new remittance, uh, new migrants. But generally, I would say that it's only a circle and we are uh, satisfied with our business. Right. So now uh, you mentioned it earlier about the economic downturn that we've seen in the region. So has that sort of had an impact on your operations? Um, you know, the, the beauty of West Union is that we are in 200 countries. We did see some uh, slowdown in the region. That's no question about our uh, growth rates definitely slow down. However, um, long term, I see, you know, again, this portfolio will grow again. And depending on the economic environment, being uh, uh, you know in 200 countries, which we saw serve more than 20,000 corridors, uh, that that's a kind of a portfolio management. And none of our countries are bigger than put the U.S. for a second side. Uh, five none of our countries are bigger than five percent of our revenue. Mm -hmm. So it's really the uh, portfolio where we invest, where we look, where the economical opportunities is. But our commitment in the business uh, in this region is huge. That's why I'm here. Right. That's why we are investing in the future. That's why we're launching the digital environment. That's why we're launching new seven countries and even starting with UE. And that's why I'm here today in Dubai. Now, uh, I was actually in conversation with the SPDA, which is Southern Philippines Development Authority. And one thing they had to say was they're thanking the OFWs, the Overseas Filipino Workers, because most of the Philippines are a lot, a majority of the economy is run by the OFWs and remittances do play a huge role in that. So, in terms of the contribution to an economy's GDP, how much would you say it does to countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Philippines, etc.? Well, it's a big part of the remittances are go First of all, it goes directly to the countries and to the people's hands. There is no middleman. Mm -hmm. That's a huge. There is about $600 billion paid every year, more than uh, you know, remittances globally. And number one received country is India. Yeah. Number uh, I think number two or number three is Philippines and Mexico. Uh, these are big, huge countries that receive remittances. I I believe um, uh, UEA alone sends about forty-four billion dollars every year of uh, remittances globally. It's a big, big impact. 
Western Union is making headway across the Middle East with more than seven countries now offering online services, including Bahrain, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman and Qatar. They recently launched the Western Union mobile app. But what is going to happen to the hundreds of branches with the signature yellow and black name boards? Correct me if I'm wrong again, do you have more of a branch model of operation and branch model of functioning? With all of these online payment options coming, would you still stick to your branch model or would you be evolving that as well? Both. <laughs> because different customer needs different uh, pay, uh, form of payments. So, uh, you know, we will have online models with partners and we will have uh, branch models, agent models uh, with our agents and connecting the digital world with cash world, it's unique. Only Western Union can do that. It's not only digital to digital, cash to cash. Having that connection, uh, ca digital to cash, cash to digital, is huge. Right now, we're not just talking about plastic money, not just cash. There's a new element of it, which is, of course, cryptocurrencies. So with this new form or alternative form of currencies coming into the market, how, do you see that as an opportunity or a threat? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's not a threat, for, first of all. You know? We move money in 137 currencies. There is 138 currency, we will move it. Uh, the cryptocurrency has to be regulated though. It should be issued by the uh, right uh, regulators and it should be regulated, it should be a nation currency. I think that uh, you know, many cryptocurrencies um, do some struggle because it's, you can't use it in day-to-day -day, uh, day -day work or day-to-day -day, uh, you know, needs. The cryptocurrencies has to be a, uh, ref, uh, um, has to be a day-to-day -day use case. Right. And it's not the case. It's only for certain people to use and you know that's an issue and it should be regulated. How is it that the customers can trust or how is it that the countries, the host countries, can trust that the money that's being sent is not being sent for illegal activities? What is the regulatory model where you can ensure that there's no money laundering happening, there's no fraudulent activities happening, etc.? I'm glad that you asked that question because um, the Regulatory environment, um, in the beginning we invested like heavily here in the regulatory environment. So we invested a lot in the technology, we invested a lot on Know Your Customer, we invested a lot in the artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to understand which money is good, which money is bad. Most of the money, thank God, it's good. Right? Yeah. But we do also catch bad money and we report that to the regulators, which we are very proud. We work worldwide with 200 regulators also here in the region or in India mm -hmm. or in the US or in the European Union and um, that's the reason that customer trusts us, that's the reason the customer likes us, that's the reason because they know that the money will arrive in, a, in the right hands. Right, but just again speaking in slang terms, the white and black money, there is no real way to differentiate it, is there right now? It is, it is, you know, the artificial intelligence is huge and we do uh, know your customer is huge. Mm -hmm. We exactly know, uh, you know, we exactly ask the questions where the money comes from, why the money is, is, uh, is sent, and who, who gets the money. And we ask the right ideas, we ask the right questions, and we do the right, uh, you know, uh, data uh, quality checks uh, that we know that, uh, you know, how we, um, how customers and regulators can trust us. Right, great. But thank you so much uh, for those valuable insights, Hikmet. It was great to have you on the show and it's great to have you here in Dubai. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you.